What should any B2B CEO or revenue leader learn from sales innovations that have happened in software as a service, SaaS sales? There are four innovations that are critical that could help your business achieve extraordinary revenue growth at a much lower cost of sales. So what are these four innovations? Well, first of all, in SaaS, there is a huge focus on land and expand. In fact, 75 to 92% of revenue for most SaaS companies comes from existing customers. And this does not have to be limited to subscription software. I have a client that sells sprinklers, basically, you know, to corporate campuses and the like. And in their case too, they might sell first one um, location, and then if they can prove water savings in that location, the expansion will happen to another 250 locations. So needless to say, for them too, there is a land and expand journey. And they have to make specific investments in people, process, and technology that will benefit from the initial post-sale journey. So this is first um, innovation. Second innovation is the level of specialization that is starting to happen within the sales organization. So it used to be that this entire organization uh, motion, customer journey, would be handled by a single sales rep. But increasingly, for most SaaS companies, these are six different roles. I might have a what's called market development rep taking care of inbound leads and qualifying them. I might have a sales development rep setting up appointments through outbound calling activity. I might have then an account executive do the actual closing of that deal. Then I might have an onboarder do the initial implementation of the new customer, a customer success manager making sure that the customer achieves impact and is fully utilizing and leveraging and benefiting your product and is happy, and then a customer account manager who might look for opportunities to drive further impact for this organization and find maybe additional opportunities to sell to that organization. So now I have six different roles. The benefit of that is that I can specialize and you see productivity overall sales productivity and individual sales productivity increase dramatically because these people are experts at what they do and they do it all day long. So this is innovation number two. Innovation number three is that much of B2B selling these days happens over the phone. I can sell even large six-figure deals, even larger, just by phone and video conversations. And so once I sell over the phone, what's also starting to happen is that these salespeople now can be clustered together in hubs. And that's very important because now these salespeople can learn from each other, right? So a lot of learning happens by putting these people physically together. So someone might find a new way to get the person on the phone or a new way to uh, describe the benefits or tell a story about an existing customer, immediately all the other reps might benefit. So if I no longer need field sales reps to be physically in the location, I can create these self-learning organizations and these hubs of inside salespeople. So the fourth and last innovation we're gonna talk about is how now to organize these teams. So rather than organizing these people functionally or even regionally or geographically, we see that territories increasingly start to align with customer segments right, and customer buying journeys. So I'm gonna ask myself, what groups of customer have similar buying needs and buying behaviors? So that as a salesperson, I could become an expert in the language of this group of customers. So it could be that in your case, you know, mid-market and enterprise customers have very different needs and language and stories that reps need to be able to tell. Or it could be that maybe the biggest difference is between the uh, financial services and the healthcare customers. Whatever the organizational principle is, the idea now is that you're gonna group these specialized resources together. So maybe an SDR, supporting two different AEs, 
with one onboarder. We call this a sales pod, a cluster of resources. But I'm now going to create different pods, each of which is going to be assigned to a specific customer segment. And more often than not, these are not geographic segments. So there you have it, four innovations that came out of software as a service sales, but really are starting to benefit all of B2B. The question is, how much is the impact of these innovations. And I can tell you one story. There is two companies that operated in the exact same market, LogLogic and Splunk. They were both selling a log management solution to IT professionals. These two companies each had about equal amount of revenue, about $50 million. They had about 1,000 enterprise customers, both of them the same. They even had an exit in the same week. How amazing is that? The only difference, I won't say the only, the primary difference between these two companies was the way they sold. Splunk was one of the early companies to adopt an inside sales, higher velocity sales model with specialized sales um, teams and a number of other factors. Their market cap was more than 10 times the market cap of LogLogic at the time of exit. LogLogic was sold to Tipco, about $150 million. Splunk went public at 1.6 billion and now is a $19 billion company. Think about that, 150 million compared to 19 billion. Or if you wanna use the time of exit, 1.6 billion. With the difference being how these companies sold. So hopefully that convinces you to take a look at not just what you sell, but how you sell and benefit from some of the innovations that are coming out of software sales and apply it to your B2B business.